So what are you doing turning it red? How, how did you achieve the unachievable in New York State? Well, I think there were a number of factors here. Uh, first and foremost, the redistricting process itself. Uh, back in January of this year, Sean Patrick Maloney, in his role as chair of the DCCC, sent a memo to state Democrats demanding that they gerrymander New York's congressional districts. Uh, and they did. And ultimately, a Democrat-appointed court of appeals uh, ruled that it was unconstitutional and gerrymandered and threw them out, and then appointed a special master who drew a fair set of maps. And as we saw on Tuesday, we picked up four seats, uh, bringing our total to 11 Republicans uh, going down to Washington come January. So you know, I think redistricting uh, played a, a major factor. On top of that, when the new map came out, Sean Patrick Maloney uh, decided, rather than running in uh, the 18th, which he currently represents, that he would run in the 17th, uh, in part because he lives in Putnam County and Putnam County got brought into the 17th. The problem was 75 percent of his current district uh, is in the newly drawn 18th. So he only represented about 25 percent of the newly drawn 17th district. And he pushed Mondaire Jones, the first openly gay black man, out of Congress to do it. And I think that did not go over well uh, with Mm. many Democrats and progressives uh, in the district. And I was coming out of Rockland, which is 42 percent of the newly drawn district. So I had a, a pretty, you know, good base of support in Rockland County. Um, and I represent 20 percent of the district in the state assembly currently. So he didn't have that kind of built in advantage. On top of that, then you look at the issues and what was going on. Democrats control everything in Washington, Albany and New York City for the first time ever in our nation's history. And they created an absolute mess a 41 year record high on inflation, surging crime, skyrocketing energy prices, a porous southern border parents being labeled domestic terrorists for daring to ask questions about their children's education. And I think voters across this district, especially, uh, were very frustrated and wanted to see balance and common sense restored at every level of government. And so I think that played a a major role as well. And then finally, in his capacity as chair of the DCCC, frankly, he wasn't paying attention to the district. Uh, he was gallivanting around the globe. He, he was raising money in Paris and London and Geneva as recently as a month ago for Nancy Pelosi. Uh, while I was out doing six, seven, eight events a day for six months and pounding the pavement, talking to voters. Uh, and I think it paid dividends on Election Day. Hmm. Now, what happened? Why didn't the you know, a lot of the Trump detractors say if you were Trump adjacent, you got wiped out like if you were Trumpy? You got wiped out. We've talked about in our first segment how that may or may not be totally true. Um, why, Why? like, do you feel like that didn't affect you at all? And I don't know whether you are Trump or Jason. I know you've said it's time for him to move on. But do you feel like you avoided that? Uh, well, you know, uh, Maloney was tagging me as MAGA Mike and too extreme for the Hudson Valley. Uh, but anybody who's talked to me for five seconds realizes uh, that's not how I am or who I am. And and I think, you know, for me, I won a two to one Democratic district two years ago. And I did that by going into every community, uh, talking to voters, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, their gender, their religion or their political persuasion. And I did the same thing here. And I think for me, that uh, played uh, well because Voters were very upset about what was going on, and it wasn't so much about being a Republican or a Democrat. Um, I ignored the attacks that that Maloney was, uh, you know, running against me. He was lying about my position on abortion. He was lying about uh, a number of things, and I just kept heavily focused on the issues that voters were concerned about, which was primarily inflation, the cost of living, and crime. Um, and just hammered away on it. And I think that obviously ultimately uh, prevailed because that's where voters were focused on. And I think part so, of this, as, as we move forward as a party, um, yeah. uh, candidate recruitment matters, uh, but also message discipline matters and not getting into, uh, frankly, issues that voters either don't care about or are less likely to get their vote. 
How big a factor do you think this so-called election denialism was in the national races? Well, I think it I think it hurts uh, any candidate that's engaged in it because, I mean, unfortunately, it, it's just not based in reality. And, uh, you know, I, I was asked very uh, clearly, do, did Joe Biden win? And I said, yes. And was January 6th wrong? Yes. And I think, you know, that immediately ended that conversation with anybody who mm-hmm. had a concern because I was not, not trying to hem and haw about it. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, I think as we move forward, we, we got to move beyond uh, some of this this rhetoric. Um, there's no question when you when you talk about election laws, uh, you want to make sure they're fair. You want to make sure that they are enforced uh, to the letter of the law. But to to just make blanket statements that the uh, the election was stolen or fraudulent, I, I don't think serves anyone well. Um, and I think for those that engaged in that, uh, I think it backfires. So one more question on Trump, and then I want to talk about Hochul. Uh, what do you think about him? I mean, I, he's clearly making an announcement next week that sounds like a presidential announcement. He's tweeting out or truthing out right now um, messages that he's the best candidate, retweeting people who are saying he's the one who should run, he should be the next president. I mean, very clearly, he's in a lane right now. Uh, should he run again? Look, he's going to make that decision and uh, nobody else is going to tell him uh, whether he can or can't run, um, obviously. And and ultimately, uh, should he run, voters are going to make the final determination. But I think, um, you know, so many of the policies that he enacted uh, are embraced by Republicans. And, and he had a lot of accomplishments during his administration. And I think what is unfortunate is that rather than focus on those accomplishments and the record, uh, a lot of time has been squandered, uh, you know, uh, talking about the past or talking about uh, what is uh, perceived slights. And, and, and I just don't see how that serves uh, him well. I don't see how it serves the country well or the party well. And I, and I think should he run, he really should be focused on the future and he should be focused on uh, what he's going to do to fix the challenges uh, that we're facing. Uh, me personally, I would like to see new voices uh, kind of step up. I think we have some uh, great rising stars in the party. Obviously, Governor DeSantis had a, a, a great night on Tuesday night. Um, but I think in, in any election, it's about the future. It's about what you can do uh, to help families and to help the voters uh, address the challenges that they're facing. And, and that's in p- large part why I won, because I stayed so focused on that and didn't get caught up in some of this other nonsense that goes on. Do you ever wonder if your vitamins are working? Clinical studies show Healthy Cell's new ingestible gel technology called Microgel delivers maximum nutrient absorption, 165% more than tablets. And it tastes great. It's hard to make vitamin liquids or gels taste good naturally, right? But Healthy Cell products are the best tasting pill-free supplements on the market. Go pill-free and get up to 15 pills worth of nutrients in one ultra-absorption gel pack, saving you money and time and giving you effective doses. Take a single great-tasting gel pack at home or on the go. It's great for travel. And you can mix it into drinks or blend it into smoothies. Old-fashioned tablets, capsules, and powders contain synthetic other ingredients like binding glues, flow agents, fillers, coatings that could irritate your gut and are just kind of gross. Plus, this is made in the USA. Visit HealthyCell.com slash Megan, M-E-G-Y-N, or use that code Megan for 20% off your first order. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.